Howdy y'all. Today's video is a bit different. Today I am working in collaboration with Marla Harris of Mad About Cards and Crafts and we are bringing you ways to create a clean and simple card using Concord and Ninth stamps. This stamp set that I used to create this card is called Unicorn Awesomeness and this stamp set that I use is called Songbird. So let's begin. And we're going to stamp that with some in intense black by Close to My Heart. You could use any black ink you have on hand as long as it's a good ink for blending with. We're going to specifically be using colored pencils for this piece, but you could also use alcohol markers or watercolors. I would recommend that if you were going to try to do a clean and simple card with watercolors, that you do that on watercolor paper. So I think that's coming along real nice. We're just going to stamp it one more time because we want to make sure we get a nice crisp image. Although our stamp did leave a little bit of an impression, it didn't leave much in, of an impression because of the, from the water, but, and that's why we were able to bring in our sand eraser and our Sharpie Ultra Fine Point to help us just redraw some of that stamping that's on this unicorn. We're going to hold off coloring for a minute while we stamp our next card. Now our next card is going to have Concord and Ninth Songbird stamped on the front of it. This one will also be done clean and simple. Now we're just going to bring in our microfiber cloth to help us make sure that we get some good even pressure for our stamped image. And I just realized we didn't stamp the sentiment, but that's okay. That's why we're using a stamp positioning tool because we will have a second chance to try to stamp it and also the bird if we didn't get a good impression the first go around. Oh, I guess we did stamp the sentiment. But yeah, we're gonna go back in and stamp the bird. I'm gonna actually remove this magnet because I'm not sure if that's what made it so that our bird didn't get completely stamped. So our card front is now complete because our bird is nicely stamped and as well as our sentiment. So there does seem to be a bit of a smudge up here so we're just going to bring in our sand eraser to help us erase that which it did really nicely and now we're just going to bring in some printer paper because I like to color my image over printer paper that way whether I'm using alcohol markers or colored pencils because of the way that I blend my colored pencils I don't have to worry that the stamped image will pick up any colors that weren't intended to be on the card front so we are going to color in our pretty little bird using some Prisma color premier pencils. We're going to start off with Spanish orange. That's going to be our bird's little beak and her little leg. And now we are going to bring in our browns. 
We're gonna start off with sienna brown and then we'll go back in with chocolate. Now, when it comes to your image, you can use as many or as few colors as you would like to, which is the same as if you were to color using an alcohol marker. The thing about the colored pencils is this. Once I'm done coloring and then I bring out my supplies to help blend in the colors a bit more, I won't really be able to go back over it with the colored pencil. So it's important to get all the color that you need out the first time. So it's important to get all the coloring done before you bring in your blending solution and do some light blending. You can always, if you find that you don't have enough coverage, you can always attempt to put more color back in, but it doesn't always work. So I recommend that you get your coloring done before you do your blending. And now we're going to go in with chocolate. We're going to use the chocolate to help create some shadow layers. And the important thing to bear in mind when you're trying to create a clean and simple look is to make sure you have good placement of your stamped images because for a clean and simple card you're not going to be doing any major techniques so like you're not going to be doing any die cutting and you're not going to be bringing in any patterned paper so now we just have to do the coloring of our bird and for our bird we are going to use a couple of shades of blue we're going to start out with the non photo blue because I like to go with my light colors first and then that way I can figure out where to place my darker colors So now we are going to go in with the cerulean blue and that's just going to be our highlighted areas. And now we are going to bring in true blue to be our shadow areas. If you find that you color a little outside of your line, you can always bring in a pencil eraser. I like to use the, the Derwent pencil eraser. Now we're just going to bring in our surface sweep. That's going to help us to get any dust particles off of our image. So now we are going to bring in some baby oil and we are going to bring in a couple of Fantastics sticks. These sticks can be sold in just a pack of the bullet nibs or the pointed nibs, or you can buy them as a group together. So you have a couple of options that way. So I like to use baby oil because it doesn't have a noxious smell to it, which sometimes, like if you're using Gamsol, that can have a noxious smell. Also, 
when you're using GAMS, if you were to use GAMSOL, you'd have to be in a well-ventilated area. Not that you shouldn't be in a well-ventilated area anyways, but you have to be a little bit more careful than you do with baby oil. So that's why I prefer to use baby oil. So now we're just going to take our nib and use it to help us blend our color in. And when you're done with blending in a particular color, I just like to sort of color without going over another color onto the paper and that way it helps to get rid of the color you originally blended with. So we're going to use this, maybe this is the bullet nib and this is a rounded nib. Sorry, I might be getting the names wrong. But I'll provide a link in the description box for both styles and also the way you can get it as a set. So now we're going to go back in. We're going to blend in the yellow. Basically this does a blend and a bit of a soften. So I think that's looking rather nice. As you can see, I don't have any more of the blue colored pencil that wants to come off of my fantastic stick. We can reuse that stick for a later time. So I think that turned out pretty well. And if you wanted to, which actually we're going to do, I'm gonna bring in a, an alcohol marker. So I'm bringing in this Ice Blue marker by Spectrum Noir. It's one of their tri-blends. And the reason I'm gonna bring in the blue is because you would see this scene out in nature typically. And although I'm not going to create um, a cloudy background for it to be on, I can bring in the alcohol marker and trace around this image to help with giving a little bit of an illusion. Also, it helps to hide the colored pencil marks that you may not have been able to remove. So I think that does a really good job. And now we are going to keep our Fantastics sticks out here because we will be doing a bit more colored pencil so we are going to start out by using this bronze to color in the letters in the word believe. I'm using the bronze because I think it gives a golden effect that you don't get with the gold colored pencil. And by that, let me show you my swatches. So these are all the colors that I have in the Prisma color premier colored pencils and that's the metallic gold whereas that's the bronze and I believe that the bronze gives more of a golden effect than the metallic gold does. Now we're not going to blend in the color for the letters because I don't think that's necessary but I do want the letters to pop a bit more so I'm just going to color them in. Now a good thing to remember about a clean and simple card is that you need to have white space. Now as the card maker you get to decide where that white space falls. Now we're going to color in our unicorn. We're mainly going to focus on the hair although we will be adding a bit of coloring for the unicorn itself 
but I want to give the illusion that this is a white unicorn, so we're not going to go heavy-handed as far as coloring the body of the unicorn. So what we're going to do is we are bringing in a couple of grays, so we are going to color the hooves in the color 30% cold gray. Oh, if you wanted to, you don't have to blend the colors that I do. I know that there's a way to blend the colors just by adding layers and layers of pencil, but I just don't have the patience for that. Now we are gonna go in with 10% French gray. and also 30% French gray. The 30% is going to go in the areas that are going to be more shadowy. Now we are going to bring in the color Deco Pink, and that's going to be the inside of our unicorn's ears. And now we're going to concentrate on the unicorn horn. For that, we're gonna go in with grayed lavender and cloud blue. Now we did that because I want to give our unicorn a softer look for her horn, whereas we are gonna go real vibrant on her hair color. And we're gonna go in Roy G. Biv order, which would be red, orange, yellow, green, and so on. So to start out, we are gonna go in with some pomegranate. And we're just going to color her hair, we want to give ourselves, so it's easier if I show you on this paper. So we don't just want to color straight, what we want to do is give her like some like edges, some horns, whatever you want to call it, but basically you want it to look more like real hair and then we're going to go in with orange now we're going in with sunburst yellow and now we're going to go in with parrot green and it's okay if you want to do that edging thing in whichever color you feel like because like for the yellow I might not have used the edging directly in the yellow but I used it in the bur in the green and now we're going to go in with aquamarine we're going to do the same thing in regards to the main but we're hoping to end in Dahlia Purple. So that's pomegranate. Now we're gonna go in with the orange. And you can just put your orange over your magenta. It's just fine. Then we're gonna go in with the sunburst yellow and the parrot green. Then we're gonna go in with the aquamarine. And to finish it off, we're gonna bring in the Dahlia Purple. Now that that's done, we're going to bring back in our baby oil and we're going to use our Fantastics 
to help us blend those colors out. Now I prefer to keep the cap, both of the caps that come with my baby oil and that's because I feel like if I keep this cap on when I'm not using it but I know I'm going to then I have less likely of a chance to spill the whole bottle out versus just a little bit of the bottle. Okay, so some of our orange is trying to bleed out, which, yeah, that's not something we want. So we're gonna bring in our eraser for that. So we're gonna try to erase some of that with the sand eraser. See, it's easier to race with the sand eraser at the end, whereas at the beginning, when you're, when you haven't started blending, it's easier to erase with the Durant eraser. So now that you've seen how I created these two clean and simple cards, let's hop over to Marla Harris's channel and see how she creates some clean and simple cards using Concord and Ninth as well. I'll include the link to her channel and video in the description box below. If you like what you saw, please click the like button, share with your friends if they also were interested in learning how to create some clean and simple cards. I hope y'all stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. If you'd like to see future videos from me, please click the subscribe button. And if you click the bell icon, it will give you notifications as to when my next videos are coming up. Okay, bye y'all.